Christopher Ward has just launched their latest creation, the C1 Moon Phase. On unboxing, I had two immediate questions. Why did Christopher Ward make this watch? and who is actually aimed at. But before we look at the watch, let's talk about how it was released, which was pretty impressive. We were invited to the Royal Observatory Planetarium in London, where Mike France unveiled the C1 moon phase, and his design team talked about how the watch was conceived. This unique watch launch event was yet another indication that Christopher Ward has grown a lot as a watch brand. Let's look at the model in detail and explore why I find it slightly confusing. Starting with the dial, it's definitely a stunner. Christopher Ward has constructed it using a material called aventurine. Aventurine is a type of glass infused with reflective flakes of copper oxide that resembles a starry night sky. It's beautiful to look at, and of course, many like this sparkling effect. However, I'd argue that it does give the watch a more feminine vibe. And this is where my confusion comes in, because the case is suited for bigger wrists. With a 40.5 mm diameter, 13.3 mm height, and 47.9 mm lug to lug, this is not a small watch. The watch weight is 67 grams, which is on the low side for an average man, but still might be too heavy for a smaller wristed woman. So with its arguably masculine size case and sparkly feminine dial, what audience demographic are Christopher Ward targeting here? Answers on a postcard. Looking at the dial in more detail, the oversized moon phase is made from globalite, a material that is a mix of ceramic and superluminova. There are actually two moons on the adventure and disc that rotate smoothly. These moons look photorealistic, even 3D, even though it's just a 2D plate. It's a multi-layered design which is very effective and not obvious similar to what we see on their C1 Moon Glow. The watch is powered by the Christopher Ward Calibre JJ04, which uses the Salita SW220 as a base. The date wheel has been replaced with four wheels that drive the moon disc. If kept wound, the JJ04 movement will actually track the phases of the moon for 128 years. The Salita SW220 has 26 joules, a 38 hour power reserve, and an accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds a day. You could admire the movement thanks to the exhibition display case back, which is always a welcome design element. The C1 moon phase is unquestionably a dress watch, if the dial didn't already give it away. The water resistance is 30 meters, so take care if you're planning to go stargazing whilst relaxing in an outdoor jacuzzi. The fit and finish are, as always, high quality, and that quality transcends across the new slim profile butterfly style bracelet with 127 individually brushed and polished links. I really appreciate the quick release system because I can easily take out the bracelet and attach my favorite watch gecko leather strap instead. You can find links in the description. While it's not necessarily my taste, I do appreciate the brave minimalistic look of the watch. There are no indices, logos, or text advertising how accurate the watch is. Just a simple Swiss made at six o'clock. Like the Bel Canto, Christopher Ward have taken their logo off the dial and have it on the crown and on the rotor. Whether there is a logo or not, their design DNA is infused in the case and style of the C1 moon phase. This watch is quickly recognizable as a Christopher Ward. It's hard to have a coherent design language that spans a variety of watches. We know that only too well. So kudos to the designers at Christopher Ward. The metal bracelet model will set you back £2,120, while the leather option is £1,995. For most people, given the design and cost, this will not be an impulse purchase. So who is the target audience with this watch? Like a growing number of entities within the industry, Christopher Ward has repeatedly said they don't make male or female watches. Their design is unisex, so it all comes down to your personal preference and wrist size. So my fear is this watch will find itself in a chronological no man's land. The sparkly dial will probably not be that appealing to the average man, while the largest case size probably won't be that eye-catching to the average female buyer. If Christopher Ward placed this dial within a smaller case, then I have no doubt they'd find a lot of interest from smaller wrists, including many of the females here at Watch Gecko headquarters. On the other hand, if they changed the dial, losing the sparkly Aventurine and replacing it with the more classically masculine glossy black or deep navy, we would be looking at a handsome and still unique men's moon phase watch. But what do you guys think? Is this a watch you'd wear yourself or does the dial or case make you shy away? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see our chat with Mike France about the 12 in 36mm, click the video on the screen to find out why they made that watch.